is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2025 lexus es 350 courtesy of bobby ray hall lexus in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because there is a new special edition package for the 2025 model year of course with the es 350 you have insane reliability definitely a car that will last 200,000 plus miles and you have all the luxury of a Lexus of course as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there are actually several different trim levels for the 2025 ES350 you got the base being the one we are in today starting at $43,250 which, believe it or not, is only a $25 bump from the 2024 model year. That's pretty remarkable because even if things don't change, for the most part, what I've seen in other manufacturers is it's jumping up like two grand. So that is incredible. Luxury for $48,385, Ultra Luxury for $52,105, F Sport Design for $47,800, F Sport Handling for $49,675, and lastly, the new Black Line Special Edition starting at $53,640. But regardless of the trim level that you go with, the power plant on the ES350 is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 302 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque. That power being sent to the front wheels through an 8-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know, of course, we will be testing on here in a little bit. But 0-60 to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.6 .6 seconds. Top speed, if you're interested, 131 miles per hour with MPG number coming in at 22 in the city 32 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the es i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a little drive mode stock coming kind of just above the uh gauges there but drive modes will include normal eco sport and then sport plus for the f sport trim level adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now i haven't got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right so before we do this paddle shifter test the first thing i want to mention to you guys there is a full manual shift mode you simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left it's then going to display what gear you were in up on the uh, digital gauges here which we'll get to a little bit later in the video but here we go in three two one go oh my gosh they're actually really good surprisingly there wasn't really any delay to them whatsoever like that was a dang good reaction time for paddle shifters and they're very high quality as well it's not like they're just some matte black plastic like you quite often find even on luxury automakers actually so i'm impressed that was really really good so they're actually useful if you wanted to have some fun in the back roads or something like that but now let's go ahead and give back full control to the es let's find one more straightaway and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right from a standstill in three two one go <laughs> there was some spinning but <laughs> <laughs> all right that was fun man like there was a little bit of spinning at the beginning you guys probably heard that but that's a heck of an acceleration i wish the es350 had all-wheel drive i will say that that's reserved for the es250 but um you would think the one with the more power would have that all-wheel drive availability so there wouldn't be any spinning but Having said that, it's still plenty quick. Zero to 60, what did I say? 6.6 .6 seconds, that's plenty respectable. So you're definitely not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. That was quite fun, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1 .1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it's interesting because it's actually going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. So for any of the trim levels, but the F Sport handling, it's gonna come in at 119 feet but the f sport handling is going to give you a stopping distance of only 114 feet so either way both of those are sports sedan numbers so it's plenty fine as far as braking feel goes it's actually a little bit on the softer side of things but i would say it's actually just right for what the es350 is so it's not like this is an esf or anything like that it doesn't need to be a super firm braking feel it's not a super soft braking feel either like an suv it's what this vehicle should be so 
I'll just put it that way. Then touching on suspension and handling, you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension in the front. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front stabilizer bar, but then with the F-Sport handling, it's gonna be front and rear stabilizer bars. Also with the F-Sport handling, an F-Sport tuned adaptive variable suspension. So you guys know I always love that setup particularly because it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So. That's definitely one I always like to recommend, but having said that, the ride quality has been incredible in our short little test drive here today on the base model as well, so definitely not gonna have any issues there. You could tell Lexus tuned this for comfort, at least this particular trim level, so I actually kind of like it. As far as uh, steering feel goes, it does adjust depending upon the drive mode that you put it in, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in sport driving mode. It's nice. It's not anything crazy, but it certainly gets the job done. It's not a super heavy steering feel or anything like that. It's definitely more on the luxury side of things, but it's something I could definitely live with. No issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 35 miles per hour right now. Definitely a very serene cabin in the Lexus. So as expected, it is a Lexus after all. Then touching a rear visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Typically with this shape of a sedan, you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever there. Touching on forward visibility though, rain sensing windshield wipers will come in the luxury trim level and up. That is gonna be optional on the base that we have with us here today. So whatever the ES detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers there. So that's kind of nice. And with the ultra luxury, you're also gonna get a 10.2 inch head up display. And believe it or not, that's an option on the other trim levels and an option that we do have with us here today. So right now I'm looking at an insanely bright high definition display up on my windshield right now. Gives me a compass all the way to the left, my speed limit, and of course safety features and my RPMs just below the speed as well. So this is a very high quality head up display. A lot of times I won't see the RPMs just underneath the speed there, but you got it here in the ES350. So I kind of like that, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Lexus ES350. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Lexus ES350 finished in caviar. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had with us here on this one here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the ES350 is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number five, indicating that the ES is built and assembled here in the US, at least for us US customers. But starting up front, Lexus spindle front grille with chrome surrounds does come standard. However, if you were to go with one of those F Sport trims, you will get dark chrome surrounds, in case you were curious. To the bottom corners there, you are gonna find front air curtains, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. Unique front fascia for the F Sport trim trims as well in a more aggressive design to the sides by led headlights with led daytime running lights you get the automatic feature with those also automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there and since I did mention that there is a new black line package at the beginning of the video, I did want to mention here that that is essentially a gloss black accent package, but it does get a little better than that. You're going to get gloss black finishes. You're going to get a gloss black rear spoiler. But the cool thing about that package is that only 1000 will be made. So it's kind of like an ES collector's item, I guess you could say. So I think that's kind of cool, but definitely a very good looking front end we've seen it before but it still looks good in my opinion but now let's go ahead and swing around to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the es here chrome window surrounds does come standard you're going to get some f sport badging found on the front fenders if you go with one of those f sport trims of course body color power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turret signals and they're actually power folding for all trim levels but the base. However, they, it is still available that you can get those power folding mirrors on the base, but I did want to mention that. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch alloys coming with the base, 18 inch alloys for the luxury and ultra luxury, and then 19 inch gloss black alloys for those F Sport trim levels. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the ES, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, you got the rear spoiler back there, which I love. That's gonna come standard on the F Sport. It's optional otherwise, but I think it looks dang good on the back of an ES. LED taillights do come standard. Nice little design to them as well. Gonna find some ES350 badging, of course, on the trunk itself. And then just below it all, 
Lexus did a wonderful job with this because so many manufacturers are tucking away their exhaust these days, but Lexus does it right. They do integrated dual exhaust outlets with satin chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the ES, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, you will find a power trunk with the kick sensor for the ultra luxury that's going to be available on the other trim levels, believe it or not. So that was pretty cool because we got it. So there is a button on the key fob, there is a rubberized button on the trunk itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.9 cubic feet. But there is a lot going on in that cargo area. There is some LED cargo lighting, that's pretty cool. You got some grocery bag hooks, believe it or not, which is not a feature you traditionally find in sedans that's an suv thing so that was pretty cool chrome plated tie down anchors and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will actually find a spare tire as opposed to a fix a flat which you guys know i love the only thing about the cargo area with the es is the back seats actually don't fold down however there is a pass through so you could throw some two by fours back there i guess if you wanted to but then make your way up to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 39.2 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i head in the back there rear ventilation does come standard you got dual rear usb charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well you traditionally don't find all of them so that's pretty cool power rear sunshades for the luxury and ultra luxury trim levels that's definitely nice rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard and you gotta love the samurai sword door handles you could tell this one was designed in japan you gotta love that i think it's so sticking cool but then make your way up to the front seats 10-way power adjustable front seats coming standard 14-way power adjustable front seats for the luxury and ultra luxury trims new lux finishes for the base and f sport trims however quilted leather then for the luxury and ultra luxury heated and ventilated front seats for the luxury trim level it up memory settings for the luxury trim level it up and of course with the f sport you get some enhanced bolstering as well so those are my favorite seats by the way any f sport seats on alexis they are so ridiculously comfortable they hold you in place so nicely having said that these seats are plenty comfortable as well plenty adjustable it's just those f sport seats they're on a different level but anyways then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable it's going to be wrapped in a new lux finish believe it or not just like the seats wood leather combination for the luxury and ultra luxury trim levels then a heated steering wheel also for the luxury and ultra luxury trim levels but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key i'm going to keep it in the plastic here but you do have the lexus logo on the one side believe it or not but then when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to pop the power trunk there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so once started up digital gauge cluster it looks absolutely amazing the cool thing about those gauges is it actually changes the color a little bit when you adjust the drive mode so if i put it in sport you're going to get a lot of white and red hues if i put it in normal it's more of a black and red hue kind of theme and then eco is going to give you some blue hue so that's pretty cool there and there are some steering wheel mount controls found on the left side of the steering wheel to control what is on the left side of those digital gauges it gives you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature there's safety information there's a compass radio information the list goes on so pretty much everything you could possibly want there and of course you got the digital speedometer front and center so that definitely looks good but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality you're going to find a power moonroof for all trim levels across the board that's pretty sticking cool dual zone climate control all trim levels yet again wireless phone charger for the luxury trim level and up it is going to be optional on the base located just behind the uh, shifter here that's pretty nice wood trim for the luxury and all ultra luxury trims ambient lighting for the luxury and ultra luxury as well home light controls for up to three different garage doors found in the bottom portion of that rear view mirror there so definitely like that but lexus crushed it with the interior quality here no doubt about that i love the wood trim that we have with us here today it's on the doors it continues just above the passenger side glove box i love the two-tone leather the dark and the light theme with the contrast stitching that definitely looks good as well uh, just to the right 
of the shifter here, you do have uh, dual cup holders and everything surrounding the cup holders is finished in a nice little design as well. It's not a matte plastic or anything like that. Then within the center armrest, there is a decent amount of storage in there actually. It's a nice soft felt kind of feeling to it as well. Got two more USB charging ports within that center armrest and uh, 12 volt power outlet yet again. So a lot of connectivity going on in here, but Definitely love the interior quality, no issues for me. But so now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. So an eight inch color touch screen display is going to come standard. However, there is a 12 inch color touch screen display on the ultra luxury. It is optional on all of the other trims. Another option that we have with us here today, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming up there, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can check out your car statistics up there if you wanted to. You got your heated seats and steering wheel buttons. You got your navigation up there as well, along with your radio information so when it comes to the sound systems a 10 speaker sound system will come standard for all trim levels across the board however there is an optional 17 speaker mark levinson sound system we don't have that one with us here today but that one comes with 1800 watts that's pretty ridiculous but anyways we do have the 10 speaker sound system with us so let's go ahead and turn on the radio let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one oh my Okay, it's a pretty good 10 speaker sound system. Um, I personally, I love listening to music, so I think the Mark Levinson is definitely the one for me. And I've heard those before, they're amazing, and 1800 watts is ridiculous, but there was a pretty good sound system, plenty of clarity, not a ton of bass for uh, 10 speakers, but it'll get the job done. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the ES in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Panoramic view monitor then coming with the ultra luxury, but that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, so it's a heck of a start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You got driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, real child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, Lexus Safety Sense 2.5. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, and the blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Then if you were to go with a luxury or ultra luxury, those two trims are gonna add intuitive parking assist and automatic braking then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ES350. Incredible reliability. That is definitely what these cars are known for. I haven't told you guys yet in this video, but my dad had an ES350. He took it 200,000 miles and then traded it in, but nothing was wrong with it. It still lasted 200,000 miles and then he just decided to switch it up. But anyways, that's incredible. Sound systems are pretty darn good. F Sport seats are amazing. As far as room for improvement goes, the rear seats don't fold down. I think that would have been pretty stinking cool in case you buy a big screen TV or something like that. You're going to need that extra space. Also, uh, no all-wheel drive available on the ES350. I would love that because there was some spinning there, but nonetheless, still plenty of power. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the ES350 in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.